<laughs> Look at these yokes on the road. What do you call these? You might call them Stimsonite markers or road studs, but over in my country, which is Ireland, and in the country they were first invented, which is England, we call these cat's eyes. Despite their constant presence in your life, you've probably never really given them a lot of thought, similar to politicians, preachers and proselytizers. The difference is, cat's eyes are content to just do their thing without bothering you. They never harass you on the street, or come around looking for money, or buy a private jet with that money, and even though their design is surprisingly clever, their history is interesting, and their function is vital, you never hear them boasting about any of that, or complaining. So today, I will tell you why cat's eyes are awesome. Because they won't. Firstly, you probably know what these things are for. They reflect light to mark the boundaries of the road in low visibility. It simply isn't, or at least wasn't, feasible to illuminate every part of every road everywhere, so we put lights on the cars. These are great, but they can only light up the path ahead of you so far. If you can only see a few dozen feet ahead of you, that might not be a problem if you're just out for a walk, but it is a pretty big problem when you're travelling a few dozen feet a second. So cat's eyes are installed along the roads, using reflective material to guide drivers through the darkness. But how does it work? How can we so clearly see the cat's eyes in parts of the road that otherwise appear dark? I mean, how is the car's light being picked up by the cat's eye, but not the surrounding area? Well, obviously, the cat's eye is more reflective than the surrounding area. That's the key here, reflection. Instead of powering a bunch of light sources, we can just reflect the light from one light source, your car. Okay, so all they do is reflect light. That's easy. All we need is a really reflective material, like a mirror, and we just put a bunch of them down, right? Well, ignoring the major issue of turning your road into a hall of mirrors, I mean, you might as well go ahead and paint tunnels on the walls and turn all the signs backwards too at that point, there is a reason a simple mirror doesn't make a good road marker. Why? Well, think about it. If there's a mirror on the ground and I shine a light on it, the light is just going to bounce up into the sky. It might blind a helicopter pilot and cause an accident. It might even be somewhat amusing, but it doesn't help me. We can't just have light bouncing all over the place. What we really need is to send the light back from where it came, so I can see it and not the helicopter pilot. This is called retroreflection, and there are a few different ways to achieve it, but today we'll be looking at how cat's eyes do it like literal cat's eyes. If you haven't figured out by now these things are named after the strange reflective property of cat's eyes, well, now you know. Basically, the back of the cat's eye is reflective, and it is in a concave shape, meaning it'll often send light back in the general direction it came from. So if we shoot a beam of light straight down the middle, it'll come back, just like a mirror. But we can also point it downwards or upwards into the surface, and it'll still come back. There are still a few cases where maybe the light won't come back the same direction, but the cat's cornea and lens will refract the light in such a way that it converges on the reflector, and now there are no more problems. For cats and other animals that exhibit eye shine, the reflected light passing back through the retina gives them superior night vision, even if the process does introduce some blurring. Thankfully, we can manufacture things similarly to how cats' eyes are set up and stick two retro reflectors in a road stud, or a bunch of tiny ones like little beads. Hundreds of cats' eyes. I have a tattoo like that. Interestingly, if you were to paint an eye onto a concave surface like this, you get a strange effect where it appears as if the eye is always watching you. Not hugely relevant, I just like to share things. Cat's eyes were first invented in 1934 by Percy Shaw of West Yorkshire, England. Shaw noticed how difficult it was to drive at night after the tram lines in his area were removed, realising how much he depended on the reflection from the rails to see where he was going. Inspired by actual cats and their glowing eyes, he put two pairs of retroreflectors, which were first invented six years earlier, also in England, in a rubber dome, one pair for both directions, and mounted it in a cast iron housing. Calling them cat's eyes, Shaw had created a very clever invention. The cat's eye was supposed to be partly buried in the road and set with some form of tar mixture. The retro reflectors added visibility to dark roads and were protected by the rubber dome. The rubber dome depresses into the ground when a car passes over it, preventing damage to the car and the retro reflectors. And the iron casting forms a curb around the thing to take most of the car's weight, further protecting the retro reflectors. This means that not only do cat's eyes mark the road visually, but you can safely drive on them and they'll give you a tactile warning that you're crossing a road boundary. 
well, they're mostly safe. Although there was an incident in England in 1999 where a van dislodged the metal housing and sent it flying into a following car, hitting the passenger in the face and killing her instantly. Moving swiftly on, there is another genius quirk in the Cat's Eye's original design. When the rubber dome is depressed, the lenses are wiped against rubber in the housing, cleaning their surface. Actually, the housing is designed to hold rainwater, so this wiping process is even more efficient. Percy Shaw had to do some convincing to get the government in on his idea, but by World War II, Britain was enforcing blackouts, making sure there were no lights on during the night in an effort to hamper German pilots above. Cat's eyes proved invaluable during this time, and they saw mass adoption across the UK before spreading worldwide. As well as different forms and shapes, they can also be made in different colours, denoting different boundaries on the road, like white for the lane divisions and amber for the edge of the road. Now you're less likely to see their original design in favour of these cheap plastic ones that are just kind of pasted onto the road rather than buried in it. I feel like these ones are always coming loose, but maybe not a big deal seeing as it's just a bit of plastic. In 2006, the cat's eye was voted number 7 among Britain's most iconic designs. This list should be interesting. Let's see. Number 10, the K2 telephone box. Alright, makes sense. Number 9, the Grand Theft Auto series. Okay, surprising, but makes sense. Number 8, Tomb Raider. Really? More iconic than the phone box in GTA? I don't think so. Number 7, the cat's eye. Yes. Number 6, the Routemaster bus. Yep, that makes sense. What about the black taxi cab though? Number 5, the World Wide Web. That will never catch on. Number 4, Margaret Thatcher. Probably the worst design so far, honestly. No, no, wait, no, hold on, no. It's actually the Mini at number 4. Number 3, the Supermarine Spitfire. Cool. Number 2, the London Underground Map. Not the underground itself, just the map. That made number 2 somehow. And number 1, the Concorde. Lots to be said both for and against that at number one, I think, but that's what the comments are for. With our usage of electricity being a bit more extensive than it was in 1934, we might see the importance of cat's eyes wane as more and more roads are fitted with lights. Maybe cat's eyes will house solar powered LEDs instead of just retro reflectors. They've already done this in some places, but I sort of feel like this is an example of something that is becoming less cleverly designed over time than it was originally. Don't get me wrong, obviously it's improved over time, but finally putting lights in them is kind of like technological logically brute forcing the problem compared to a time when we just had to make the best of what we had. I think this is a very elegant solution to a problem that maybe we can just eliminate altogether today. Which is good, I just like this. So what do you think? Can you still appreciate something even when it's been made obsolete? I think the answer is yes. I mean, people love vintage cars and retro video games and mechanical watches and vinyl. I guess it just comes down to being able to say, this is better but I like this. And that's how I feel about cat's eyes. The old design is just more interesting to me. Something about it just says, a human made this, you know? Well, if I've made you care about something that you see literally thousands of every day without ever really paying much notice, I think that probably deserves a subscription, right? If you subscribe now, which is free, you'll see my videos as I make new ones. You can also watch all my other videos, which are often about much less mundane subjects. If free is not good enough for you and you just have to give me some money, why not buy a t-shirt or a channel membership? Regardless of what you do, thank you for watching my video.